Welcome to this uh, lecture on network analysis, where we'll be looking at uh, some of the details of what a network actually is and how we might want to use them. So, the first uh, obvious thing for uh, a network is to find a route and directions. You've probably done this using some sort of sat nav or Google Maps to, to find your way or some other product. Uh, but we can also use network analysis to calculate uh, coverage and access. For example, if we have bus stops or ambulance stations, shops, how many people can access the shop easily or the bus stop easily. But we can even use network analysis for such things as um, uh, routing of, of data through a computer network. Um, there are uh, also uses for image analysis as well, where we can connect different parts of an image to find out information stored within that image. But we are going to focus now on these more geospatial uh, aspects, directions uh, and uh, access to the network from infrastructure. So just to quickly uh, give a, a demonstration of what we're talking about, here we have uh, some little town somewhere and we want to cycle through the roads to get somewhere. And we want to use a, a straight route. We don't want to be going all around the houses. Uh, unlike that cyclist. Or we might want to say um, place our bus stops and we can see that placing a bus stop in the middle of a park is perhaps not the best place for a bus stop. Um, near adjacent to the park would improve the positioning of that bus stop um, but we might want to consider placing it at a road junction um, but also where are the people, um, the people who are going to use the bus um, they need to access the bus stop. So we want it to be in a good location for access to the network, but also access to the buildings surrounding it. That's uh, so where we have offices or homes or, or what have you. So these are parts of network analysis. But what is a network then? So it, it is vector data. We are talking about uh, nodes and lines, points and lines, where a node is um, a position, a location where we can either access the network or change direction, change to a different line. Um, so these nodes are junctions. Uh, and lines connect the nodes. Our network is built up of nodes connected by lines. A, a line must end in a node. Uh, and nodes are connected only by lines. Uh, lines can cross each other without there necessarily being a connection between those lines. We have to have a node for those lines to intersect. If there is no node, there is no intersection. Uh, and all travel through our network is along the lines. We are constrained to these lines, essentially. We will examine that point a little more further on. So just to illustrate, here we have a system of four nodes, uh, M and N, X and Y here. And we can travel between X and Y along this line here, and we can travel between N and M along this line here, but we cannot do anything else. There is no access. Uh, we cannot go from N to Y, X to M, for example. Um, if we introduce a new node, Z, here in the middle, we can travel from Y to Z and then from Z to X. This is essentially the same journey as before, but there is a node up, uh, in the middle there. It means we can stop there if we like as well, but we still cannot access these other two nodes because this line here continues straight over. We need to break this line up. We need to introduce another node, as it were, in that line as well. So that the all four lines now, what were what was two lines has become four lines where they all meet in this central node here, uh, with this uh, being a, 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 a junction. And we can switch between uh, any of these lines uh, to go to whichever node we wish. So that's uh, the, the basics of, of our network. We also have considerations um, such as turns. In more complex uh, networks, can we turn left? Can we turn right? Can we make a U-turn? We do not have to set this up. By default, all turns are legal within the network. If we wish to change that, if we wish to have illegal turns or, or legal turns, uh, then we can put those settings into our network. But by default, all turns are possible. And by the same token, um, we have something called stops where we can forbid certain turns. We're not allowed to say turn left, or we're not even allowed to enter into a new road 
uh, we, there may exist a node at a junction, but we can only go to that node and no further. Or uh, we might introduce the concept of no U-turns, where we have to carry straight on. We can't turn around and come back along the same line for some reason. Uh, this is uh, um, quite an important concept when we have more complex route analysis as well. So these are settings that we uh, can put into our network, but they aren't necessary. By default, all junctions are completely, all, all junctions, all nodes, where several lines come in are completely open and free, and we can move whichever way we like through them by default. But we can introduce these settings. Another important concept within our network is, is applies more to the lines, uh, and this is the idea of weight. So our network, uh, at least as we consider it within uh, uh, GIS, will be spatial. Uh, so the distance between nodes along a line is one aspect of our network, but we can add a weight to that distance so that the travel time or the cost or some, some sort of measure of traveling through the network is not simply the, the straight line distance uh, between two nodes, but is rather some, uh, some weighted distance. So, for example, when we have a maximum speed limit, here we have one kilometer. Uh, if our maximum speed limit is 90 kilometers an hour, then it will take 40 seconds to travel that distance. So our cost, we could say, is 40 seconds. Whereas if our upper speed limit is 110 kilometers an hour, we can uh, travel the same distance at only 33 seconds. So our cost is seven seconds uh, less uh, on this same stretch of road, the same distance at least. But because the, the weighting is different because of our speed limit, it costs us less to travel along this road. A slight diversion from network analysis. Let's just uh, look at that. We had a one kilometer distance and that uh, by traveling at 110 kilometers an hour rather than 90, we won all of seven seconds. You may be in a hurry to get to, into school in the mornings. Uh, you shouldn't be in that much of a hurry though because uh, you will increase the likelihood of having an accident and causing injury either to yourself or to other people by speeding unnecessarily or by speeding by definition of the word. So uh, basically, don't. Uh, nag over, let's move on with network analysis. So returning to a network, we have this concept of the weighted distances, um, but we have a, a network, another network here, again consisting of four nodes, uh, connected in this instance by three lines, and we wish to travel from A to D. There really is only one way through this network, it's a very simple network, uh, from A to B and then from B to D, and that will cost us four units or whatever our, our, our cost is here. One plus three is four. So it costs us one to travel from A to B and then a further three to travel from B to D. If we then introduce two more roads, we can travel via C instead. So from A to C costs us one and from C to D costs us a further one unit. That costs us two. Very simple. Um, if we introduce yet another road, the uh, goes directly from A to D. We can see here that it has a cost of three, which means that it is still uh, uh, cheaper, faster, how we want to define this, to travel via C. Despite the fact that we have a direct connection from A to D, the cost of traveling along that direct connection is higher than traveling via C. This, is a, this could be a real world example where, for example, um, at particular times of day, uh, the direct connection between A and D uh, has a lot of traffic on it. Uh, everybody wants to get home as quickly as possible, or get to work as quickly as possible, and so the road becomes uh, slower to travel. Even though the, the speed limit may, may be much higher, there's so much traffic that traveling along that road becomes very, very slow, and it will be quicker to travel the smaller roads via C. This uh, is also in something else we can set in our uh, in our network, where we adjust the weights used on a particular road according to the time of day. Again, this is not something that we have to do by default, uh, but it's a, it's a possibility. So here, here we can see that just simply connections between nodes, uh, because they exist, they aren't necessarily the fastest um, path through a network. 
we have to actually examine the costs of traveling through the network node by node in order to find our fastest, cheapest uh, route, whichever, wh wh whatever aspect of it, of traveling through the network we are looking at. So that simple network uh, was a very basic analysis. It seems pretty straightforward, but as soon as we start adding in lots more roads, it becomes a lot more complex. And so really we want computers to be doing this job for us rather than us having to do it. Even though we might, well, if we live in a town or a city, might have an intuitive feel for what the fastest right route might be. Sometimes we're wrong and other times we just, we're just we a stranger to town and we would like some help with this idea. <laughs>